Hi, this is a quick video that will explain how HashiCorp boundary works. This video should provide you with a good mental model of the main boundary components and how they interact and what the user experience should look like. So first, let's start with the objective of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to securely connect a remote user to their desired infrastructure resources. So these resources are referred to as targets and they can be various types of VMs, OSs, hosts, Kubernetes clusters, and databases. So where does boundary fit into all of this? Well, the first component is a boundary controller. Think of the boundary controller as the brains of the whole operation. The controller is a centralized management and control plane for boundary. It stores all the boundary configurations. So for example, an administrator or an operator would log on to the controller and configure users or groups uh, and which ones are authorized to connect to which other host or host groups. The next component is the boundary client. The boundary client is installed onto an end user's desktop or laptop. We provide the CLI clients or the desktop clients to the users and users would uh, use the clients to authenticate themselves to boundary uh, to the boundary controller. So once they are authenticated, they can then use the clients to request connections to their desired target resources. And then lastly, we have the boundary workers. Boundary workers can be VMs or containers or anything that can run our Go binary and it acts as the proxy for all user connections to their targets. So depending on the organization's network topology, there could be multiple workers, but for simplicity, uh, we'll just show a single worker in our diagram here. Now, the next thing is that we'll highlight a couple boundary integration points that really enhances boundary capabilities. The first one is with HashiCorp's vault. So boundary includes a built-in capability to store credentials for some of the target resources like SSH keys, for example. But at the same time, Vault has advanced features to generate uh, just-in-time dynamic credentials that are short-lived. And many organizations have already standardized on Vault as a centralized uh, secrets management platform. So it really makes sense to offload the credential management onto Vault rather than using the built-in boundary capabilities. Lastly, Boundary supports OIDC and LDAP to integrate with various identity providers and directory services like Okta, Ping, Auth0, and Active Directory. So Boundary can store individual users and their respective login and passwords, but many organizations, again, have already centralized their identity providers, so they, it makes sense to just offload the authentication to the existing providers. Now, in the end, all of these components should really be invisible to the end user except for the Boundary client itself. So with that said, let's walk through an example of what happens when users connect via SSH to, say, a Linux host. The first thing they would do is use their client to authenticate themselves with Boundary, and I'm showing the desktop UI as the example here. I'm also showing the user selecting Azure AD as the identity provider as well for this example. Boundary will redirect them to Azure to authenticate. Now, once authenticated, they will be given a list of targets that they are authorized to connect to. Once they make their selection, the boundary controller will communicate with Vault to fetch the corresponding credential for the particular Linux host. The credential is then sent down to the boundary worker. And finally, the user can use their favorite SSH client via the terminal or PuTTY to connect to their target using the loopback IP and port number provided by Boundary. They will be proxied through the Boundary worker and directly to the Linux host, and the credential will be injected automatically for them. They will have a passwordless experience, which is more secure and alleviates them from having to manage their own passwords and credentials. There's one last thing I wanted to touch on. Boundary offers two deployment models, a cloud-managed and a self-managed model. HTTP Boundary is the cloud-managed solution where the Boundary controller is managed for you in HashiCorp's own infrastructure. This makes it very simple and very easy to deploy and maintain the best practices and backups and upgrades since it's all done for you. And for self-managed solutions, there are two options 
the open source boundary and boundary enterprise. The open source boundary version allows customers to deploy the boundary controllers into their own infrastructure. The open source boundary option, however, does not have enterprise capabilities like session recording, uh, multi-hop sessions, or credential injection. On the other hand, there is a self-managed boundary enterprise version similar to the open source version with the difference being that it does include enterprise features and premium support. The self-managed boundary enterprise option is typically meant for organizations that have strict regulations to keep data within their own infrastructure or have concerns with data sovereignty. Everything else in terms of features, functionality, or user experience is pretty much identical. Hopefully this gives you a good baseline of how Boundary works. I encourage you to go to developer.hashicorp.com slash boundary slash tutorials and try out Boundary and go through our excellent selection of guided tutorials. Thank you for watching.